Let's go over five tips that you can use to solve linear equations. We're talking about one step, two step, even some multi-step equations. Now, some of these are going to be pretty common and it might be a good refresher, but I'm going to tell you there are some that I have completely made up on my own over the years of teaching and seeing students struggle with linear equations. So let's get right into our first tip. The first tip is just to use X's and Y's. Now, I know, ladies and gentlemen, this might not be a little controversial. And to be honest with you, you have to be used to using other variables, right? We don't want you to always go back to using um, just X's and Y's. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to lie. When students starting to struggle, sometimes just looking at other variables mixes them up. So while I want you to get used to and get comfortable with using different variables, we don't, we can't just rely on always using X and Y's. If you're coming into a test or you're still trying to get over that hump of understanding the operations to solve a two-step or a, an equation, linear equation, then revert back to solving using X's and Y's, right? Because that's at least the one, hopefully, that is going to be the most familiar. So I'm a proponent of this in the beginning, but obviously I want you to continue practicing using your other variables. So in this example, it might be something that's like, hey, what is M, right? And it's like, all right, I don't know. Well, Pick what you want to be able to solve for. Usually solve for X or solve for Y. So all I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to replace these two variables with an X and a Y. Hopefully that makes things a little bit easier and a little bit more comfortable for you. Now, this is also very, very helpful. I didn't do an example, but for linear, uh, for literal equations, obviously it's not going to work when you have more than two variables. Um, but if you do have two variables and you have like some C's and some D's and L's and M's, sometimes it just gets a little confusing. So revert back to X's and Y's. Okay. It's a helpful little tip just to kind of get you over that while you're still getting used to using other variables. So just for the practice of this one, actually, this is a literal equation. I don't know why I was like saying that, but in this example, we can just, uh, um, subtract the three Y to both sides. And then we get a two X equals a negative three Y plus eight. And then we'll go ahead and divide by two. And it's sometimes just a little bit more comfortable dealing with X's and Y's than it is going to be dealing with, um, you know, M and N. So eight divided by two is going to be four. All right. Now let's go and look into the next one, which is going to, and this one is actually one of my favorite examples. And this one I came up with all my own. I don't know. Um, if it is, probably is out there. It's not like it's a, a magic trick or like that. But through my years of teaching, seeing students, the ones that would struggle the most, this would be the first thing. Sometimes I'd revert to X and Y's, but a lot of times I would revert to using the box approach. So the box approach works like just like this. So if I have the equation 3X plus 1 is equal to 13, I know this is a fairly basic equation. But if you're just first learning equations, this might not be basic at all. So when we're trying to solve for X, right? What we need to do is we need to apply the inverse operations. We need to undo everything that's happening to X. And whatever we do on one side, we have to be able to do on the other side, okay? So a lot of students, we get that repetition, so they get used to it. However, sometimes it just still gets confusing, right? And we also have to apply the reverse order of operations. We want to undo addition and subtraction before we undo multiplication and division. So one thing I tell students when they're first learning this is just to put a box around the X, all right? So from now on, every single time that I rewrite this equation, I'm always going to write the X over the box. And I'm not going to stop until that X with the box over it is completely done. So now I go through my thinking of saying, all right, I need to use the inver uh, reverse order of operations. That means I need to undo addition. You can see the one is being added to the X. So I'm going to subtract a one on both sides using the properties of quality. Make sure you do it on both sides. And then you have a three X is equal to a 12. Again, put the box over the X. And what the box over the X is technically doing, I like to think of it as like pinning it, right? We're just not going to move that X. Now, obviously this works when it's on the left-hand side. Um, I mean, it works on either side, but a lot of times when we have equations on the left-hand side, it just, it makes it easier for some simple, nice equations. Now you can see my X or this box around my X is being multiplied by three. So I need to undo multiplication. So to undo multiplication, I'm going to divide by a three on both sides. Now I'm going to get a final answer of X is equal to four. Since the X is now isolated, I'm not going to write the box because that is going to be my final answer. All right, number three. And now this is going to come when we have something that is when the X's are on both sides. So a little bit of a, not a two-step or a multi or a one-step equation. Um, but in this case, we'll have something that looks like this. Now, on the last example, it was fairly basic to use that X because, ladies and gentlemen, the um, 
the X was on the left-hand side. And a lot of times we, a lot of problems in our textbooks, our teacher will give us is going to be on the left-hand side. But just like you have to get used to, you know, different variables such as M and M, you also have to get used to being able to solve for X on both sides. And I don't want you to always fall into the trap of getting an X on the left-hand side. While you can do that, it's not always going to be the easiest. And the example in this, and the, um, and the point that I'm making for on this one is, yeah, you could solve for the X on the left-hand side, but that's going to make it negative. And I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, from my years of experience, the number one mistake that students will make when they're doing problems is when they're dealing with negatives and they're dealing with fractions. But guess what? I'll have a tip with you on fractions in just a second. Now, before I get to this, if you are getting value out of this video, or if you've gotten any value so far in this video, and again, I still have two more tips. Um, I don't care about subscribing, but I would love to be able to hear you comment down below or shoot me a like. That really uh, means a lot to me because a lot of times I can get a little lonely at home. I don't have a classroom full of students. So guess what? I sit at home and I read through your comments. So if you're getting value, post down a comment. Let me know that um, you're getting some value in this, and I really appreciate a like as well. So First thing I'm going to do is I recognize if I subtract a 9x, or when we're solving an equation when we have x on both sides, we got to get the x to the same side, either the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Don't always try to go to the left-hand side. What I want you to do, the tip is always try to get your x so it's going to be positive, all right? And again, this isn't a, the reason why this is like a tip is because this is where a lot of students will make mistakes is once they start dealing with negatives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 7x on both sides. Now, what that is going to yield me is going to be an equation of 13 equals a 2x minus 5. Now, again, we already have everything in x's, so that's fine. You could, boost, you could put a box around the 2 if you'd like to. But if you start feeling pretty comfortable about what's going on here, then you realize, okay, I have a 5 that's being subtracted from the x and a 2 that's being multiplied. So I have to undo the subtraction by adding a 5 to both sides. Then I have 18 equals 2x. I can go ahead and divide by two on both sides and therefore nine is equal to X. And if I don't like having it as nine equals X, I can just go ahead and flip that around and rewrite that as X is going to equal to nine. Um, next one. Now this is one of my favorite. Actually, I didn't write down what the example was on this one. So I do have it on my sheet of paper. So let's go ahead and write this down. So I have a three halves times an M minus five and equals a three times a M plus one. Okay, so the next tip is to eliminate the fractions as well as eliminate your parentheses. Ladies and gentlemen, what we want to get to every single time that we're trying to solve an equation is we want to get to that two-step equation. We want to get to this. This is like the holy grail of solving linear equations. Get to that two-step, get to that one step. This stuff is basic. The more practice you do, the more comfortable you're going to get to that, right? So we want to get to this. So right now, we have this. How do we take this and get it to that? Well, what we need to do is get rid of some of the things that we have. Right now I have fractions and I told you, right? Remember, negatives and fractions are where a lot of students make mistakes. So we need to understand what is a fraction. Fraction is basically a division problem, right? Three, two, or three being divided by two. Now two does not evenly divide into three. So what we need to do is find something that two evenly divides into. And hopefully you recognize that two evenly divides into itself, too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 2 times both of these equations. So it's going to look like this, because again, right, just like how I added 5 on both sides or divided by 2 on both sides, if I'm going to multiply an equation and I'm going to keep that equation true, I have to multiply that 2 on both sides. So it's going to be 2 times a 3 halves times m minus 5 equals a 2, let's go and get the right color, 2 times a 3 times a m plus one. All right, now again, we know two divides into itself one time. One times three is just going to be a three times an m minus five is equal to a six times an m plus one. Now, what do we do about getting rid of the parentheses? Now, again, the parentheses, ladies and gentlemen, are just a grouping symbol. What it's saying is this is not three times m and then minus five. This is three times the quantity m minus five. So we're grouping the quantity m minus five. So to be multiplied by three. So what we simply need to do is distribute that multiplication to both terms, right? That's the distributive property. But once you do that, once you distribute that multiplication, you don't need to write the parentheses anymore. So now I'm going to have a 3m minus a 15 is equal to a 6m plus six. 
Again, it might be helpful to go ahead and rewrite this in X's and Y's if you wanted to, but I, I want you to get practice here as well. You could also go ahead and solve it on the left-hand side, but again, let's go ahead and convert it to the right-hand side. Actually, you know what? Um, there's actually a mistake that I made that I actually didn't catch. I made, I made a note to myself to be able to do this and I forgot. So I do apologize. Um, hold maybe that like, maybe after I correct myself, you can do the like. And probably somebody already commented and be like, hey, you're not solving for X, you're solving for M. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, the purpose of doing the solving for X's and Y's is not to solve for X, you still got to solve for M. So all we simply do when we replace things with X and Y's, just be careful with that because my mind started going off and in another direction, thinking about the other problems I was going to do. And you'll probably make the same mistake as well if you're not careful. So if you're going to replace your M and your N with your X and the Y's, that's fine. But just make sure when you write down the final answer, it's not this. The final answer is going to be a M is equal to a negative three halves N plus four. So sorry about that, students. You're welcome, teachers. I went ahead and caught my mistake, thankfully, before I had to go to edit or into even publishing this. So let's actually go through all three of these tips on this problem because, you know, I, I, I don't know. I'm feeling kind of having a little fun. So these are both M. So I'm just going to rewrite this as a 3X uh, and minus a 15 equals a 6X plus 6. I'm just going to remember, make sure you solve for M write the equation for M at the end. Now again, I don't want to solve for the left-hand side. I'm going to solve on the right-hand side. So I'm going to subtract a 3X on both sides. That's a negative 15 is equal to a 3X plus 6. I'm going to put a nice little box around this so I can remember to use my inverse operations. I'll subtract a 6 on both sides. Now notice this is a negative 15 minus 6. So if you owe me $15, you're going to borrow 21. Or you're, if you owe me $15 and you borrow 6 more, you now owe me $21. That's equal to a 3x. I'll put a box around that in just a second. Now I can see that my 3 is being multiplied or my x is being multiplied by 3. So therefore, I'll divide by a 3 on both sides. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I get a negative 7 is equal to x. But I'm not going to make that mistake. And again, I'm going to rewrite this as m is equal to a negative seven. All right, the last example, number five, is going to be one of my favorites. And again, this is one that I have just found throughout the years has helped students more and more. Um, and you don't always have to do this. Again, all these tips, you know, really just comes down to the practice. And once the more practice you get, the more comfortable you get, you're gonna come up with your own kind of techniques that are going to make are going to help you be able to solve equations more efficiently and not make mistakes. If you actually have any more of those tips, then let me know down in the comments down below because I'm always interested to see what other tips did I miss out that I could have added to this video. Obviously, we can go beyond linear equations, which I will have some videos on. All right, I wrote down this equation on my paper, so um, let's go ahead and write this down. So I have a seven minus a five c is equal to a double deuce. Okay, so. What is the what is the tip? The tip is whenever you have a problem like this, a lot of students are doing they're trying to identify their inverse operations. They get a mix up. They see a positive set, they see a negative, so they think they need to like undo things. And my tip is here is just simply always rewriting your equation with the variable in front. All right? Notice how my variable is in front of my constant. So what I'm simply going to do is I'm just going to rewrite this as a negative 5c plus 7 equals 22. Now remember, when you're doing this, you always got to make sure you attach the correct sign with your with your uh, with your numbers or variables. So that is a positive seven, right? There's no negative in front. I know there's no plus sign there, but again, we can assume that it's going to be positive because there's no negative in front. So therefore, that's a plus seven. And again, just don't forget to keep that a negative in front of the five over c. So first thing again, we're going to do, you could use the box if you want to. Um, let's go ahead and do it. I'm going to keep this as a C because I don't like rewriting it at the end and I want to get used to using Cs. So I'm going to subtract a seven on both sides. And then in this case, I have a negative five over C is going to be equal to a 15. Now, here's where a lot of things kind of come under, which is kind of like a cardinal rule of solving a linear equation or in this case, I have a negative five divided by C is equal to 15. And you might say, well, what operation is being applied to my C, right? It's in the denominator. That means my C is actually dividing into negative five. So how do I undo this? I think the main thing that I want you to 
go through as we went through all these examples is understand every single time that I solve for a variable, it was in the numerator, right? We could always think of this as m over n or m over one over here. That's in the numerator. It's not a fraction. That's not a fraction, not a fraction, right? That's not the fraction. So every single time that we're solving for x or our variable, it's always in the numerator. So what that means is we need to get this off of the off of the denominator. So how do we get things off of the denominator? Well, again, going back to what we did over here, you got to find something that it evenly divides into. And the quickest, easiest thing to find something that it, uh, your denominator even divides in, evenly into is going to be itself. So in this case, if I multiply by a C, let's use a green. If I multiply by C, I got to make sure I do that on both sides. So I'm going to multiply C on both sides. That's now going to leave me yeah, with a negative 5 is equal to a 15C. Now, again, we'll put that box over there. Sorry, color choices kind of got a little wrong. And now I recognize, all right, my C is being multiplied by 15. So I'm going to go ahead and divide by 15 on both sides. That kind of gets a little confusing because remember I said always to pin that C. And here to be an example where that tip kind of goes by the wayside, to be honest with you. Um, but more often than not, the pinning is going to work, especially really works the best for basic equations um, that you have when you're first learning. But obviously, when you get to more advanced problems, you got to be able to come develop your strategies as well. So now what we have is going to be a C, I'm just going to rewrite it on the left hand side is equal to a negative five over 15. And now we can reduce this, find what number evenly divides into the top as well as into the bottom. And I recognize I can divide the top and the bottom by five. So now I'm going to get my final answer is going to be a negative one over a three. So that's it, ladies and gentlemen, that is my five tips. Again, if you have some more tips that you'd like to offer in this video, then go ahead and put them down in the comment down below. I really appreciate hearing your insight and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Cheers.